Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa. Before we begin the lecture proper, I would like to make a few introductory remarks about this course itself. At the present time, many people have been developing an interest in meditation. And part of this phenomena is the interest in the Buddhist forms of meditation. But in order for the practice of Buddhist meditation to become an effective means to spiritual development, it has to be based upon a clear understanding of the purpose of meditation. The purpose itself can only be grasped when we understand the doctrinal framework underpinning the practice. To follow correctly the Dhamma, there are two things which have to go together hand in hand. One of these is understanding, the other is practice. If these two can be brought into unison, if they can be made to complement and support each other, then the pursuit of the goal can be brought to a successful conclusion. But if we have one without the other, then that can only lead perhaps to a futile end. To have knowledge and understanding without practice, this is like counting the property of others without owning anything ourselves. If we look at our neighbor, we might see that he has such a beautiful house, so many cars, such a nice lawn, so many nice flowers, and so on. But as long as the property belongs to the neighbor and not to ourself, then it doesn't do any good to ourself. Or again, just having knowledge without practice might be like compared to reading the menus in a restaurant without eating anything. Even if we look at all the menus of the fanciest restaurants in town, that won't satisfy our own appetite. On the other hand, to want to practice without having the understanding needed as a grounding for the practice, this also is insufficient. In order to reach a given destination, we have to know where we're starting from, where we're going, and what is the route we have to travel along to reach our goal. To practice without having that understanding, this is analogous to the case of somebody who wants to travel from Washington, New York, to New York, but he doesn't know the streets of Washington, he doesn't know the streets of New York, and he doesn't know the routes leading from one city to the other. Still, he thinks that the most efficient way to reach his destination is simply to get into the car, get onto the roads, and start traveling whichever way the car will take him. In such a case, he might use a lot of gasoline and put a lot of mileage on the car, but he won't meet much success in reaching his goal in getting to New York. Thus, we need these two elements, understanding and practice. Kariyati and Pati Pati. And these have to work together hand in hand to bring about the achievement of the goal of the Buddhist teaching, enlightenment and liberation. Learning can be considered not only a supplement to practice, but also as a part of practice. For the entire Buddhist discipline aims at the growth, at the growth of wisdom or understanding. Wisdom is the key to realization. And the Buddha teaches that wisdom develops in three stages. The first of these stages is the wisdom born of learning, called Suttamaya Panya. We don't have to become scholars of the scriptures, but before engaging in practice, we have to acquire some basic knowledge of the framework, the doctrinal framework of the teaching by means of learning. And this study of the teaching leads to the wisdom born of learning. Then, having acquired this degree of understanding, the seed of wisdom, in the second stage we have to develop the wisdom born of reflection. Shintamaya Pan, wisdom born of reflection. We have to examine the teachings we have learned 
We have to explore them. We have to see if they're consistent, if they hold up, if they make sense. We have to check them out against our own experience and see if they can be verified in our own experience. Then, when we've seen that the teachings are valid, then we apply ourselves to realize the inner meaning of the teachings by the means of meditation. And the practice of meditation here leads to the third level of wisdom, called Bhavana Maya Kamya, the wisdom born of meditation. So in actualizing the teaching of the Buddha, we have to pass through these three stages one by one. First learning, then reflection, and then meditation. Meditation transforms the content of learning and reflection into actual experience. The present course is not intended to give a thorough and exact scholarly account of the Buddha's teachings. 